It's one of the most colourful experiments that young chemists perform, but is it worth repeating for older students? Today we take a closer look at the Rainbow Fizz practical and what it can teach us about choosing the right indicator for a titration. pH is a measure of how acidic or alkaline a solution is. Universal Indicator Solution can reveal this for us with different colours according to the pH. Acids below pH 3, like household vinegar, turn it red. Water being neutral is green, and oven cleaner turns the indicator purple, revealing a pH above 11. Great for removing fatty deposits. Add some indicator to a solution of sodium carbonate and we see it turns purple. Its surprisingly high pH of 12.2 explains why it's commonly known as washing soda. It's alkaline enough to have some success removing fatty or oily stains from clothes, a little bit like a gentler version of the oven cleaner from before. As I add 100 cm cubed of 1 molar solution of ethanoic acid, not a lot happens. On the top, where the acid and alkali are mixing, we're mostly seeing the reaction of sodium carbonate to form sodium hydrogen carbonate, or sodium bicarb if you're old school. On addition of another 100 cm cubed of acid, we're seeing a lot more fizzing. Now as far as younger students will go, we can stop at, mmm, top-notch neutralizingness, or whatever the kids say these days, but on closer inspection, there's a lot of cool stuff we can look out for. Notice, for example, where the fizzing is coming from. Around the bluey-green color associated with pH 8, we see some bubbles forming on the surface of the glass. Away from nucleation sites, we see these forming in the solution at lower pHs, but the important thing is that there's nothing at higher pHs. Why is this? Well, before we can generate any gas, we need to actually have a reaction that produces it. This first reaction of the carbonate produces sodium hydrogen carbonate, but importantly, nothing that will generate any gas for us. We need a lower pH for this to occur, and the colours we're seeing here give us some clues about what kind of indicators would be appropriate choices for a titration involving this combination of reactants. Universal Indicator Solution is a mixture of a number of indicators, each existing in one of two coloured forms. A possible way of making such a mixture includes the indicators methyl orange, methyl red, bromothymol blue, and phenolphthalein. At the top of the solution, following the first addition of acid, our pH is somewhere around 8. The phenolphthalein is already colourless and the other indicators are either yellow or blue, giving us a bluey-green appearance overall. This is of vital importance when it comes to selecting indicators for use in the titration. Let's repeat the experiment with hydrochloric acid, which you're far more likely to use in the titration against a carbonate solution. We're going to see how phenolphthalein and methyl orange perform as indicators. We'll add just under half the amount of acid needed to completely react with the carbonate. At this point, phenolphthalein has completely turned colourless, but methyl orange has a long way to go. On addition of another load of acid, we're now in a position that we've nearly reacted all the carbonate. The methyl orange is still yellow, but look at the amount of fizzing. Although in a titration you want to avoid this, as it will throw off your endpoint, I've selected the conditions here to make the most of it. Following the final addition of a few mils of acid, and the methyl orange turns red, right at the place we need it to. So why does the graph have this weird shape? Well, that requires just a little bit of math, so if you can bear with me, I can promise you some pretty, more pretty colours at the end of the video. Back to the indicators again. These change colour at different pHs, and the pKa value of an indicator will tell you the pH at which half of the indicator molecules exist as one colour, and half of them exist as another. If you want to do a titration, then you need to try to match the pH of the colour change with the point where you've added the volume of titrant required to completely react with the contents of the conical flask beneath, what we call the equivalence point. When it comes to a strong acid reacting with a strong base, you're laughing, because the near vertical part of the pH curve we saw appearing earlier is so broad that lots of indicators will change colour very close to your equivalence point. 
with solutions of weak acids and bases, although there's still a big difference between their concentration of H plus and OH minus and the background concentration in deionized water, it's not as marked a difference as before, and that dramatic jump in the pH gets a little bit less impressive, making the choice of an indicator a lot more important. What we need to do is pick an indicator that changes color at the same pH where the equivalence point lies. Essentially, the pH of the salt solution produced by the reaction between the acid and the base. That stretched out part of the pH curve needs to be as near as possible centered on the pH at which our indicator changes color. But how can we predict that? The piece of information we need is the pKa for the indicator. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation states that the pH of a weak acid, such as an indicator, will be equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid. In our case, the indicator in its two colored forms. Where the color changes, these are in equal concentration such that the pH is the same as the pKa of the indicator. Essentially, for any titration involving a weak base or a weak acid, you need to choose an indicator with a pKa that's close to the pH of the solution of the salt produced in the reaction. Now this brings us to our final point. Of course, if you have a weak base reacting with a weak acid, then you're in trouble because you never really get that full steep part of the pH curve that you need. Essentially, you're going to need a different technique to do your titration, perhaps with some kind of a pH probe. So anyway, it's time for some more of those pretty colors I promised, and I have to say that before you throw away your giant rainbow fizz experiment, what's really worth doing is messing it all up with a stereo beam. So sit back and enjoy the show.